This is the story of the last crew in this generation to sail beyond the ice walls. It was the year 1900 and a crew of adventurers had plans to visit lands that motivated many explorers of the time. The frozen tundra of Antarctica had captured the imagination of sailors across the world. This was during a time where the icy continent was an open book. There was no Antarctic Treaty yet, so there were many who sought to traverse the frigid waters to rewrite history in their name. And one crew in particular in their attempt to do that would end up in a place that they never imagined. A place where very few had uncovered and even less had returned home to tell their tale. The old but faithful vessel headed straight to Antarctic waters on September 28th. As a captain, Ernest had almost 40 years experience under his belt. He knew every port and every corner of the Atlantic Ocean. He and 10 other sailors were passing through Drake Passage. The waters were unrelenting, beating and battering the ship back and forth. The swells reaching 20 and 30 feet. And although the crew had much experience in these types of waters, at night, it only got worse. The pitch black filled the space around them like a void, and death seemed to be calling them closer by the minute. This, coupled with a great storm, angered the waters even more, and it bashed their vessel like a battering ram from God himself. Their boat was getting tossed around as if it was a child's trinket. They were at the mercy of mother nature, and they were fighting for their lives. The entire operation was out of control for several hours, but it seemed like an eternity to the sailors. Eventually, it came to a point where they had done all they could. With their clothes soaked to the bone, they huddled in the middle of the ship and left the rest to the gods of the sea. But as they now stood together in the middle of the ship, they noticed that every once in a while, the waves seemed to give way, and this gave them a new hope. But this hope quickly turned to fear when they realized the strange ice walls that were ahead of them. To avoid hitting the massive walls of ice, they turned the boat and started to sail parallel to it. But they quickly realized the further they got from the wall, the more intense the waters got. So they found a happy medium to where they were surviving. As they sailed along for a few miles, they quickly noticed something odd about the ice wall. It looked as though there was a massive break in it where the waters were much calmer. So they made the obvious choice. They headed for the passage where calmer waters lie. But on the way to approach it, they realized it was creating some sort of swell within the passage. At first, they were perplexed, but nevertheless, they had to approach. And as they went in it, something even more strange took place. The swell didn't intensify, but from the sea below them, a vortex started to turn and rise from the waters. For a few moments, they were headed in the same direction, all their navigation equipment going haywire, and they began to spin, then increased speeds, and they were spinning at a rate they couldn't imagine. At this point, the men were so dizzy, they had to sit on the deck. They couldn't stand any longer. They all fell to the deck of the wet boat, and when they opened their eyes again, the frigid cold that they once felt was gone. As they peered back, they saw the vortex once again start forming in between the cracks of the great ice wall. They looked at each other thinking the same thing. What the hell just happened? And that's when they looked up and noticed a red dot in the sky. What could it be? Another planet? With their compasses gone awry and their navigation equipment shot, they looked around, not knowing what their next move would be. That's when they spotted the only land visible to the naked eye. And what else could they do besides approach it? After what they had been through, it was the only choice. What were the chances? Going through two vortexes of light and ending up in calm waters with the sun shining? It was the only possible salvation they could possibly achieve at this point. After a short period of sailing, they arrived at the island shores, uneasy to what dangers might await them. They sat on the boat for a few moments, looking around, making sure it was safe to go ashore. Eventually, they did just that. They could see off in the distance that there was much vegetation that could provide possible food, and they were starving, so they went to shore. But some of the men cautiously stayed behind, out of fear of what could be lurking on that island. Those that went to shore rushed to the vegetation, where they found lush red fruits, and immediately began eating them. After eating, they waited for a short period to make sure there was no adverse side effects. As soon as they noticed there weren't any, they continued to indulge. After getting their fill, they made baskets out of shirts, loaded them up, and took them back to the ship. Night fell, and they sat on the boat, perplexed as to their position at the moment. Something still just didn't seem to set right, but with full bellies, the captain 
eventually let himself drift off to sleep. But not before he assigned the crew to rotate in shifts and keep watch, just in case anything hostile approached. All was quiet the first couple hours of the night, but it wasn't until about halfway through that something sinister took place. As the ship hand on watch was peering out into the darkness, he noticed an odd light emanating in the distance. This light had shone brightly just above the water, and it was approaching at a decent pace. As they got closer, he quickly noticed that the light seemed to be coming from under the water. It looked like the lights were individual, but part of a large mass. For a second, it seemed to stop, and then it started approaching the ship much faster than before. That's when he started yelling, Captain! Captain! Woke him from a dead sleep. Captain, look! He looks out to the water, and he can see the lights approaching at a rapid speed. 50 yards, then 25, and suddenly they stop, and they poke their head above the water. They can see the bright yellow eyes staring at them. Then suddenly, thump, 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 they look around, and it seems to be spears. Then out of nowhere, one of the men lets out a scream and falls into the water. Man overboard! The crew rushes over to help the fallen man, but they see as these creatures grab him and pull him under the water. The men are stunned, the spears still flying through the air. They seem to be made of whalebone and stingray barbs. The creatures were now close enough to get a good look at him. Their faces were scaly and they had unkept hair between holes on their head that pushed out water. What the hell are those, Captain? I don't know. Then suddenly, one pokes its head up. With its eyes emanating yellow light, it let out a loud scream that sounded like a siren. They quickly surrounded the boat and began beating on the bottom of it, causing all kinds of noise. All right, boys, drop the sails. We got to get out of here. And they immediately did so and began making their way towards the open sea. The bright yellow lights and the thudding kept following them until they got to a certain point. Then suddenly, they stopped. The monstrous creatures all poked their head above water. And they could see their bright yellow eyes for miles. And finally, they disappeared. The men made an educated guess at which direction they came and headed that way. As the sun peeked over the horizon, they noticed the ice wall. Then, they noticed the vortex. This time, as they approached rather than two, there was just one vortex. And as they neared it, it quickly drew them in. It started to spin, and the men once again got dizzy and fell to the deck. By the time they woke up, they quickly realized they were just off the coast of Africa, a place where they were familiar with and had been many times. They all agreed and talked it over to never speak of this experience again, because they knew nobody would ever believe them, and they'd be deemed crazy. Little did they know they escaped from an island very few ever had, and that island was known as Death Island, beyond the ice wall.